Father God, we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. God, we thank you. I thank you for the opportunity to even get to, to just bring encouragement, hope, uh, correction, uh, faith, uh, just whatever, Lord, you have today. God, my hands are open. And Lord, I just pray that you would bless your word and God, that it would, that the ground that those seeds would fall on would be soft and ready in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So we are preaching on what's the series we're in. This is class. I like the front row. Okay. I like it. You, we are friends. Uh, the real Jesus, that is the series that we're in. And so today we are going to be talking about Jesus, right? We're going to be saying, what are some of the things that maybe we believe that we need to tweak our theology on and all those good things. Um, but back in the day, we used to have, how many grew up, anybody grow up old school? Okay. Cause you could be young and still be old school. So like who's old school? I need to know. I need to know. Okay. So we used to have, and maybe you can relate. And if you're new school, don't feel left out. That's what the fast song's for. <laughs> but if you are old school, we used to have services where, you know, church, it was a little bit different back then. There was no internet. There were no, you had, it, whatever. It was different. In my denomination, it was real different. Okay. We'll just leave it at that. But I'm grateful for my heritage. But we would just like sing the name of Jesus for like ever. And so we would have services where that was literally maybe the only thing that would even happen in the service. And there were, how many people remember those old songs about the name of Jesus? So my favorite was Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Anybody know it? There's just something about that name. Oh, we got more old school than what I thought. Okay. Master, Savior, Jesus, like a fragrance after the rain. Then we go back to Jesus. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim that kings and kingdoms, they would all pass away. But there's something about that name. And we would just sing Jesus. We didn't have all this online teaching. There was no digital books. Maybe you got an audio cassette. And so when something may happen in your life or in service or in the world, you just be like, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And sometimes we forget how powerful that the name of Jesus is. One of my oversights um, in, our, in our organization that our church is a part of, she was encouraging me just a few weeks ago, and she was telling me how she began to just be, pray the name of Jesus over her children. And so she would just be on a walk, and she'd say their name and say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And what she was doing was declaring the lordship of Jesus over their life. And so when you speak the name of Jesus or you sing the name of Jesus or you declare the name of Jesus or you pray the name of Jesus, there is power in his name. That demons tremble in his name. That healing happens in his name. And so if you don't have all this training and you don't know where to start and you're a new believer, did you know that you could just say the name of Jesus? And I guarantee that the Holy Spirit will help you do the rest. The name of Jesus is powerful. It doesn't mean that we stop there, but it's somewhere to get started. And so today we are just doing a big prophetic activation as a church. We're going to challenge. I'm going to chat lovingly challenge some thinking in your mind. I'm going to challenge um, maybe the way that you viewed the name of Jesus. I, we're just, is that all right? Can we just grow together? Can we walk out taking another step in the right direction? So today y'all are breakers. Welcome. You're on the team. You are a breaker this morning. And so 
one of the things that I was challenged with, you know, I, we, we just moved into a house. So excited. And we got some new rules. Okay, Cheeto hands, not allowed. They were allowed in one season, they're not allowed in another. And so we all, when we come into a new environment, a hotel, um, a restaurant, you know, there are different rules at a restaurant when you're at a beach versus in Manhattan. Don't show up with no shoes on. Put a shirt on, right? When you go into a hot tub, what is listed? Real big. All the rules. And so I think sometimes when we come into the kingdom, we don't like the word rules. But we have commands, And what the commands do is they safeguard you from getting into trouble. So for example, you would think everybody would know don't stay in a hot tub for 36 hours. But because they want to make sure that you are aware, they'll put that on a piece of paper so that they can say, hey, 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 we told you. And so God's word, even though I'm not trying to make us legalistic, I'm not trying, I I, I need you to hear me in your spirit today. Don't be petty, okay? Because we ain't doing all that. Don't be petty. But the thing is, when you come into a kingdom, maybe we don't use the word rules, but we do use the word commands. And so there's some things in the kingdom that we have to orient to in order to participate in what's safe and fruitful in a kingdom. Okay, are you with me? Well, here's the thing. So there's certain things that you can do, but if we took the time to list all of that, that would be a scroll that would go all the way from here to like California, okay? So we're not gonna get lost in what you can do. Well, praise, I only teach what you can do in the kingdom. Okay, I'm gonna tell you some things that you can't. Because we're talking about the real Jesus. And there's certain things that you can't mix in the kingdom. All right? So I'm going to, but before we do that, there are some things that Jesus cannot do. And I'm going to list some of them to you. So if you're taking notes, number one, Jesus cannot lie. He cannot lie. So I'm going to read some scriptures to you. And for those who are my scripture counters, I have 34 counted numbers 23 19 god is not a man that he should lie nor a son of man that he should repent has he said and will he not do it or has he spoken and will he not make it good first samuel 15 29 also the glory of israel will not lie or change his mind for he is not a man that he should change his mind we don't have old school jesus and new school Jesus, just like we had old school songs and new school songs. That's not the way that the kingdom works. It's the same Jesus through the ages. It's the same God through the ages. You say, well, I like the God of the New Testament. I'm not too hot of the God of the Old Testament. Well, it's the same God. His personality did not change. He did not have an awakening. You might have had that. God doesn't have that. We'll get into that in a second. Hebrews 6, 18, so that by two unchangeable things in which is impossible for God to lie, we who have taken refuge would have strong encouragement to take hold of the hope set before us. One more, Psalm 89, 35. Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. So we're just gonna take a minute and think about And I'm just going to challenge you. And if you want to close your eyes, you can. You can. It can be a moment of prayer or, you know. But we're just going to take a second as a church. And we're going to just think about what are the things that Jesus said? Maybe in prayer. Maybe in a dream. Maybe it was a scripture that God gave you through his word. But I'm talking about not what God said through sister so-and-so, brother so I'm talking about what did, what did God say to you? We're just going to take a second. What are the things that Jesus has said? You can write them down in your phone. I think it'd be great to go back to that. What are some of the things that Jesus has promised? 
Do you have an unbelieving son or daughter? Did Jesus, you know, did you, in prayer, did you see, uh, you know, a vision of you having a, 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 a family that was functional, that communicated? Maybe you're living in dysfunction. Now, what are the things that Jesus promised? What are the things that he prophesied? He isn't done yet. That's the challenge. He can not lie. He cannot lie. If he told you he's going to do it, he's going to do it. If he told you he's going to bless your finances for honoring the Lord, he's going to do it. If he told you that he was going to provide for your family spiritually, emotionally, physically, he's going to do it. If you, if you had a vision of, of you having a godly spouse, hold on, he's going to do it. And so you have to go back to what did Jesus say? Because if he spoke it in his word, I can tell you right now, he's for sure going to do it. And so Jesus, he cannot lie. He does not contradict himself. So many people are online saying Jesus did that, but that was for that time. No, Jesus said it in that time and he means it in this time. We're talking about the real Jesus, not culture Jesus, not pop culture Jesus, not American Jesus, the real one, the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. Jesus was there. And so we have to know the character of God that he doesn't lie. Okay, number two, Jesus cannot change. He doesn't change. Isaiah 40 verse eight, it says the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. Y'all got to wake up. The word of God will stand forever. We did it like the sandlot. In the last service, forever. I don't think you guys are ready for that. That might be 1230 stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Hebrews 13, 8. It says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. forever. Somebody got it back there. Psalm 102, 27. It says, but you are the same and your years will not come to an end. So here's the thing. There is certainly oil on his word. And I want to read that whole chunk of scripture in Psalm 102 verses 25 through 28. NYC, are you with me? Okay. It says, of old, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will change them like a robe and they will pass away. But you are the same and your years have no end. Who's getting a revelation? The children of your servants shall dwell secure and their offspring shall be established before you. Do not let go of the promises of God. Jesus's words are true. Do not let go. Revelation 22, 13, it says, I am the alpha and the omega. I am the first and I am the last. I am the beginning and I am the end. Let me tell you, if you walked in with dead things today, hold on. You're in the middle. He's at the beginning and he's going to be at the end. You just stay true to God's word. You can't change him. He cannot lie. He cannot change. Culture cannot change Jesus. Relevance isn't a problem for Jesus. Structure doesn't change how Jesus' kingdom operates. Legislation doesn't change Jesus' mind. Time doesn't water down his word. American can't push ideology onto Jesus. People don't have to dial him back. People cannot make Jesus more palatable. It was counterculture then and it's countercultural now. There wasn't a law that could have prevented the curtain from staying together. It was the, the action of the, of the resurrection of Jesus. You can't create laws that can prohibit his glory from coming into earth. 
Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we have tried to serve him up as palatable. But he said, let me read you what Jesus said. Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Listen to this, especially if you're in the valley of decision. I pray that there is a Holy Spirit awakening in you today. This is serious. It says, enter by the narrow gate. For the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow. Get this in your spirit, believers. And the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. Welcome home. Narrow gate, hard road. Love wins. Narrow gate. Hard road. I got to teach you the real Jesus. Now, is he with you? Absolutely. Does he love you? Absolutely. But if your church doesn't have anybody leave it. Everybody feels comfortable. Nobody feels challenged. I'm challenging you. Preach the word. Jesus can not change. He isn't changing. You cannot mix the secular and the sacred. You might be able to do that for a little while. You cannot mix calamity and the holy reverent presence of God. I have been challenging my children so deeply in this season I've been telling them that what you do in secret when the door shut is who you are. It is not who you are when you're up here and Marcus is slaying it on the drums. That's not who you are. But thank you, sir. Thank you, man of God. Who you are is who you are when nobody sees. He isn't changing because the gate is narrow. Wide gate is I do whatever I want and I love the presence of God. Narrow gate is I don't do whatever I want and I love the presence of God. I've been reading that scripture, the wages of sin is death. And let me tell you, I have read that so differently over the course of this series. I used to think, used to, That's a hillbilly word. (laughs) Long Island, you can adopt that if you'd like. Used to could. I used to could. I used to think that the wages of sin is death. So in other words, I read that my whole life. My whole life, I read it as the consequence of sin is death. Makes sense, right? But when I looked up the word wage... And I looked it up in context of what it really meant. What it really means is you are working for a kingdom. You're either working for the kingdom of darkness or you're working for the kingdom of light and your wage is life or death. So you're earning back what you're working for. Doesn't mean that you're getting a measure of punishment Although that is a part of it. It's not about God punishing you. It's about you punishing yourself. He will punish sin. He will have his final day. But I'm telling you that the wages of sin is death. If you're working for the kingdom of darkness, your portion is death. If you're working for the kingdom of light, your portion is life. One gate is narrow and one gate is wide. Acts 5 verses 1 through 11, Ananias and Sapphira. I'm not going to read to you all the scriptures because it would take my total to 46. (laughs) Ananias and Sapphira. You can't mix the spiritual and the sacred. 
what happened there? You're going to have to read that this week. It's Acts 5 verses 1 through 11. But what happened was they held back a portion from the Lord. And it wasn't about the money. It was about the portion of their heart. And what happened is God's physical presence, it ends up showing up in that room. And they could not hold up in the glory of God. You cannot mix the sacred and the spiritual. You cannot mix the secular and the sacred together. They were dead at the door. And let me tell you, for all those who are like, well, I believe in the new covenant. That was in the new covenant. That was after Jesus that that happened. Jesus cannot change. You mean to tell me that we're cheapening the holiness of his spirit, the holiness of his glory, the holiness of his ministry? They couldn't host the holiness of the presence of God. He cannot lie. He cannot change holiness. We need a holiness revival up in this generation. And I'm seeing it. Man, I'm seeing Gen Z who says, I don't want fake. I don't want fake. I'm watching it. I'm watching people who are like, I can't do it anymore. I heard somebody say a few weeks ago, I can't live like this anymore. And I said, because God is calling you to holiness. It's exhausting trying to live two lives. It's exhausting trying to believe in two different Jesuses. It's exhausting working for two kingdoms. We need a holiness and a righteousness revival. So who is the real Jesus? In this season, in this time in history, you better know. You have to get a revelation of who Jesus is. We're going to take a second and we're just going to examine what are some of the lies that we've believed about Jesus. What do you need to replace with his truth this morning? So you believed a lie. What is the truth that needs to be replaced? John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. You can't separate him from his word. Well, I believe in a higher power. I believe in God. All right, then you better believe his scriptures. You have to reverence his scriptures with your life. Not your words. Not on Sunday. The narrow gate. It's got to be more than Sunday. It's got to be more than letting us sing over you. Let's just take a minute and you can jot these down if you want or put them in your phone. But what's the lie that we've accepted about Jesus? Don't write down the lie that like so-and-so has. I'm talking about you. What's the lie that we've accepted about Jesus. I'll just name off a few. This gets your wheels turning. There are many ways to heaven. Lie. That's a lie. Jesus accepts anything. Lie. That's a lie. Here's another lie. Jesus is mad at me. Maybe that's a lie that you've believed in this season. Here's another lie. I have too much sin in my life. So what are the different lies that you've accepted? Just take a second. Holy Spirit, quicken them now. Quicken them now. Holy Spirit, reveal to them the areas where they've believed lies. So what's the biblical truth, right? That we need to replace with that lie. So if the lie is there's many ways to heaven, here's the truth. There's only one way to the Father, and that's Jesus. That's it. If the lie is that Jesus accepts anything, the truth is that narrow is the gate and the way is hard. 
If the lie is that he is mad at me, the truth is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If the lie is that I have too much sin, the truth is that your sins as far as the east is from the west. He is faithful and just to forgive. So he cannot lie, he cannot change. I want y'all to stand to your feet on this last part. The last thing that I'm gonna talk about today that he cannot do, he cannot leave things dead. He cannot leave things dead. Whenever Jesus went to a funeral, there was a resurrection. And so some of you have come in today with things in your life that are dead. Some of you have accepted the lie, I will never have a family. Some of you have accepted the lie, I will never have a healthy marriage. Some of you have accepted the lie, I will always be poor. Some of you have accepted the lie, I will always be crazy. I'll never sleep. I'll never get a good job. I'll never preach again. I felt that for somebody. I'll never worship again. And what you've done if you, as you made some of these inner vows in your life, and then in your spiritual walk, those inner vows have now taken on the character of Jesus, not the real Jesus, your Jesus. But today we are putting the real Jesus on the throne and he's not just this person that we sing to on Sunday, but now he is the Lordship in our life. Lord, whatever you say, I will do. Because Jesus cannot leave things dead. He doesn't do funerals. He doesn't do them. Let me read this to you, Luke 7, 12 through 15. It says, as he drew near to the gate of the town, behold, a man who had been dead or who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a considerable crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, hear this, he had compassion. Jesus has compassion for the things that are dead in your life. He sees you. Man of God, he sees you. Woman of God, he sees you. He's got compassion. It says he had compassion on her and he said to her, do not weep. Then he came up, touched and the bear stood still and he said young man I say to you arise and the dead man sat up began to speak and Jesus gave him back to his mother when Jesus raises things he puts them back in their rightful place if your son or daughter is running from the Lord don't worry hold on believe what he said narrow is the gate I believe your son and daughter right now could have an angelic visitation. I believe right now the Holy Spirit can get to them and minister to them right where they are. So we see three funerals. We see one in Luke 7. Another one we see Jairus' daughter. But Jesus on hearing this answered him, do not fear and only believe that she will be well. Some of you have had too much fear in the areas of unbelief. 
But Jesus said, do not fear, only believe, and then she will be well. And when he came to the house, he allowed no one to enter with him except Peter, John, James, and the father and mother of the child. All were weeping and mourning for her, but he said, do not weep for she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him knowing she was dead. Some of you have family members, friends, laughing at you for believing what God said about your family, believing on what God said about your ministry. And what the word of the Lord is to you is that it will rise. Do not allow their unbelief to enter into this season with you. And they laughed at him knowing she was dead. Verse 54, but taking her by the hand, he called saying, child arise and her spirit returned and she got up at once. Rise up, dead things coming to life today. And I love how Jesus didn't allow just anybody in the room where there needed to be a miracle. Sometimes you gotta believe and not let people enter that prayer room with you. Not let people, you can't bring everybody into the dream. You can't bring everybody into the, the prophecy. You can't bring everybody in to what God spoke to you. Doubt is loud. Y'all hear me? Doubt is loud. But Jesus has the final say. Jesus has the final say. And so if you're believing for your marriage, you might have to say, yeah, 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 we're not, we're not talking right now. You're, n- you're, you're not coming over for dinner right now in this season. Or maybe you're believing for freedom. You might have to say, you know what? I don't know that you can come around me for a little bit. You're gonna have to stay out until I'm healed. You're gonna have to stay out until our marriage is restored. You're gonna have to, you can't bring all that doubt into my chapter right now. You can't bring all that into my prayer room right now. It may look like a house, but this is an atmosphere of miracles. This is a waiting room. This is a situation that I know that the Lord is gonna turn around. You can't bring everybody in that room sometimes. And so we have to put people around us. The reason why those people were allowed in is because they were believing for a resurrection. That's why we don't let fear linger here. We say, fear, you gotta go. This is an atmosphere of miracles. The people who come in here, their children will serve the Lord. Their finances will be restored. Their husband will come home. Their wife will see a miracle. And so while people are laughing, you're gonna get used to People laugh, but we rise. They might be laughing, we're gonna be rising. And the gate is narrow and you might be alone, but I'm telling you, you are only alone for a season. Let me show you, let me show you another funeral that Jesus goes to, Lazarus, remember that? Verse 43, it said, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Sometimes you gotta get loud for the things of God. When people say, you don't need to do all that, I'm like, really? Because Jesus was loud. Lazarus, come out! And the man who had died came out with his hands and feet bound and his face wrapped in cloth. And Jesus said, unbind him and let him go. We're gonna unbind some things. We're gonna get loose to some things today. We're gonna undo the grave clothes today because the real Jesus believes in the resurrection. Jesus didn't even go to his own funeral, he got up. And so when you get in the atmosphere of Jesus, you gotta get comfortable with being loud. You gotta get comfortable with being bold. You gotta get comfortable with telling people, don't come around me with your ugly doubt. I'm believing for a miracle so here's what we're gonna do if you have an area of death in your life wombs finances dreams 
creativity. Man, I felt that. Somebody here has felt a depth of creativity. Business, family, freedom in your mind. What is it? If you have an area of death, just lift up your hands. We're going to get free in our seat today. You don't need nobody to lay on your ha- hands on you right now. This is a withdrawal. This is a withdrawal. This is a withdrawal. This is an encounter. We're changing the way that we think today. We walked in with confusion, but we're walking out whole in our mind, healed in our mind. We came in with identity crisis around Jesus, but we're walking out sure of what his word says. Who has death in their life? Who has death in their life? Lift up your hands boldly, boldly. Matthew 27, 51 through 54, it said, Behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split, and the tombs, plural, 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 and the tombs were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tomb after his resurrection, they went to the holy city. They appeared to many, many. We are all coming out of the tomb today. Come on, lift it up to the Lord.
idle areas of unbelief go in the name of Jesus. Maybe we've had big faith in other areas, but we can't seem to let go of this little corner of fear. We surrender it to you, Jesus, today. Maybe our finances, our career, maybe we have had great times of worship and prayer, but there's an area that we've reserved for unbelief. God, we release it to you now in the name of Jesus. Every sibling serving the Lord, every child serving the Lord, every parent serving the Lord. God, we believe, we believe it's not as good as it's ever gonna get. God, we believe, we believe, we believe, God, we surrender it to you today. But Jesus said you are mine. together I guess how many surrendered an area of unbelief he cannot lie he cannot change he cannot leave things dead today amen amen we may have walked in with dead things but we're walking out with new hope new life we're walking out on a narrow gate amen 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 and I can assure you you will not be alone here if you're visiting and you're like oh my goodness I've just been doing this on my own don't join a connect group we want to connect with you we want to believe God for you because this is an area of constant submission you're gonna walk out he being healed in one area of unbelief and let me tell you you get a bill in the mail on Monday you're gonna have another area but you just keep on believing, you keep on coming into the presence of God, but let the real Jesus change you. Don't let therapy Jesus change you, don't let you know hippie Jesus change you, political Jesus change you, allow the real Jesus of the Holy Scripture to change you, amen? Amen, amen. 